Bonjour et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Cindy. In this lesson, you're going to learn all about indirect objects, including indirect object pronouns. So first things first, what are indirect objects? An indirect object is a noun or a noun phrase preceded by a preposition, such as à or pour, and which refers to a person or thing affected by the action of the subject. You can find the indirect object in a sentence by asking to whom, to what, for whom, or for what. For example, il écrit à sa tante, he is writing to his aunt. To whom is he writing? To his aunt, à sa tante. À sa tante is therefore the indirect object. The reason you need to be able to tell if the sentence has an indirect object and where it is is because to avoid repetition, indirect object pronouns usually replace indirect object nouns once they have already been mentioned. Indirect object pronouns are usually placed immediately before the verb or helping verb if one is present. So, if a sentence contains both an indirect object pronoun and a direct object pronoun, the direct object pronoun comes first and is immediately followed by the indirect object pronoun. So, the most common sentence structure in this case is the subject, followed by the direct object pronoun, followed by the indirect object pronoun, followed by the verb. The indirect object pronouns are me, te, lui, nous, vous, leur. Me, te, lui, nous, vous, leur. Please bear in mind that me and te become m apostrophe and t apostrophe when the verb they are placed in front of starts with a vowel or a mute h. So, for example, il a acheté des fleurs pour sa mère. He bought some flowers for his mother. Des fleurs is the direct object because that's what he bought. And pour sa mère is the indirect object because that's who he bought the flowers for. So, if his mother had already been mentioned, we could replace the indirect object noun, sa mère, with an indirect object pronoun, lui. So we would get, il lui a acheté des fleurs. He bought her some flowers. Notice that lui has been placed before the helping verb, a. Also, as we saw in the previous lesson, a direct object noun, which here is des fleurs, can be replaced by a direct object pronoun if it has already been mentioned. So, if both his mother and the flowers had already been mentioned, we could say, il les lui a acheté, he bought them for her. So, we've got the subject, il, the direct object pronoun, les, the indirect object pronoun, lui, and the verb, a acheté. Please note that we've had to add es at the end of the past participle acheté to make it agree with the preceding direct object, le. However, remember that past participles never agree with preceding indirect objects, but they do have to agree with preceding direct objects. Please note that if the conjugated verb is followed by a verb in the infinitive, the object pronouns are placed immediately before the infinitive and not before the conjugated verb. For example, Il veut faire plaisir à son père. He wants to please his father. Veut is a conjugated verb and faire is the infinitive. So if we wanted to replace the indirect object à son père, with an indirect object pronoun, 
We would get. Il veut lui faire plaisir. He wants to please him. Notice that the indirect object pronoun lui is placed after the conjugated verb and before the infinitive. Also, bear in mind that indirect object pronouns can only replace indirect object nouns if they are either a person or an animal and are also preceded by the preposition a or the preposition pour. If the indirect object noun is not a person or an animal, you can't replace it with an indirect object pronoun, but instead you can replace it with the adverbial pronoun i. You'll be able to learn about this adverbial pronoun in the next lesson. So, for example, instead of saying, je réponds à un email, I'm answering an email, you could say, j'y réponds, I'm answering it, if the email had already been mentioned. Something else you need to be aware of is that in most cases, an indirect object referring to the first or second person singular cannot be placed after the verb, and therefore the indirect object pronoun me or te needs to be used instead. For example, you shouldn't say il fait mal à moi, but il me fait mal. He is hurting me. It wouldn't be French grammar if there wasn't any exceptions, right? So here are the most common verbs before which you cannot have an indirect object pronoun. Être, to belong to. Faire attention à, to pay attention to. S'habituer à, to get used to. Penser à, to think about. Recourir à, to have recourse to. Tenir à, to be fond of. Or to care about. If those verbs are followed by a person, you need to replace the person with a stressed pronoun. That is either moi, toi, lui, elle, nous, vous, eux. But we'll learn about those in more detail in an upcoming lesson. So, for example, le chien va devoir s'habituer aux enfants. The dog will have to get used to the kids. You can replace aux enfants with à eux. Le chien va devoir s'habituer à eux. The dog will have to get used to them. I hope you found this lesson useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it. And if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. That's what the comments are for. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I upload new videos regularly. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.